Welcome to New Money here on CCTV News. I'm Michael Wong. It's at the very center of a sector that accounts for 15 to 20 percent of China's GDP, the property market. But it's also at the heart of the country's booming services sector as well. Combining the dynamics of both worlds, this week we dig deep into the home rental industry here in China, and in particular, a rising star in the field, Zirum. We'll sell it for 199 yuan. But inside, there's a lot of exciting, high-quality stuff. At this company meeting, Zi Room CEO Xiang Lin is launching a new idea, a 199 yuan moving-in package. Xiang Lin is in the rental housing business, and in 2011, he founded Zi Room, a brand owned by real estate group Homelink. As more and more Chinese move into cities, demand for rental apartments in Beijing has remained high. Homelink's most recent research shows that about 9.5 million people, or 45 percent of the capital city's population, live in rental accommodations. However, the high demand has not necessarily translated into housing quality. I did some research on this in 2010. I found that in one building, the kitchens were empty and six apartments shared one bathroom. I was shocked because I thought that life had improved in so many ways. But young people nowadays live in places that are even worse than they were when I graduated. A lot of small companies will trick you out of money. Often, everything seems normal when you first move in. But when you move out, they will make up reasons not to return your deposit. Shady companies, shabby housing, and vicious competition have done little to help calm the rental market. At the same time, much of the leasing business has shifted to the Internet. Many websites began offering house rentals, and social media became an important channel for people looking for a place to live. The market was sluggish when Xiong Lin entered the rental business in 2011. He decided then to ditch the traditional real estate business model and instead refurbished and rented out entire residential buildings. Those first apartments were designed to be practical and the furniture was from Ikea. Xiong established ZRoom.com to offer his new service through the online to offline model. We expanded our market reach and built our brand online. All of our products and services are provided through the O2O model. The company reached 10,000 clients within six months of its establishment thanks to the internet and now has more than 80,000 rooms and more than 200,000 tenants. The company had 1,000 workers as of 2014 and made an estimated turnover of 2 billion yuan, or 330 million U.S. dollars. So Zuroom targets young tenants through an online to offline model. How is Zuroom playing differently versus its peers? Now, before I introduce our guests for today, make sure to use your smartphone to scan the QR code at the bottom of your screen right now to follow CCTV News' official WeChat account where you can find more New Money episodes. All right, joining me this week is Professor Jia Ning, Deputy Director at the China Business Case Center at Tsinghua University. Professor, thank you for joining us. Thank you. So right now, nationwide, we are seeing a bit of a property slowdown right here in for China. Sure. Housing prices dipping a little bit here in first-tier cities. They're either dipping or they're stabilizing. We're talking about a home rental company right now. So perhaps there might be some unique market opportunities, I should say for a company like Zoom to come into the market when the nationwide property market is slowing down, perhaps maybe change existing mentalities from a buyer's market to more of a rental market. I agree. I think there will be tremendous opportunities for private rental companies like Zuru. Um, you know, these rental 
agencies are basically intermediaries between property owners and people who are looking to rent. So generally speaking, their business will flourish if both the demand and the supplies are high. Right? So in terms of supplies, as you mentioned, Michael, we are seeing a slowdown in the property sales market. I think this will in turn actually drive some property owners into the rental market. Mm. In fact, in China, we're actually seeing a lot of vacant apartments right now. And I think the vacancy rate this year or last year in uh, more accurately, was about 22 percent compared to only three to four percent in countries like United States. But as you mentioned, you know, since the property sales market is already coming down or stabilizing, so the cost of holding vacant apartments will increase gradually. Okay? So I think this will provide incentives for these property owners to actually put their apartments up for rental. Right. So Professor Zirum is a pretty relatively young company, I would say. Right. It's only about two years plus old and. When it decided to come into the market, it was already quite saturated. Two major players in the home rental industry already, online, Sofin.com as well as Ganji.com. And these two websites actually have more housing options compared to Zeroom. Mm. So given this backdrop, how was Zeroom still able to come into the market and make a sort of niche market for itself? Right. Well, that's a great question. Um, I think these two housing websites you mentioned actually represent the first attempt of moving uh, traditional offline real estate agencies online. Right? They are essentially online information platforms, so they go out, gather all the housing information, make them available online. So it makes it easier for people to search for the apartment they're looking for and see what's available out there. But I think um, their business model also has a number of challenges. So for example, one is uh, information asymmetry in the sense that these housing websites actually do not take the responsibilities in verifying the information they post up on their websites. For example, you could be seeing how, uh, fake housing information or fake pricing information. And also uh, the second challenge is there's little uh, pricing transparency in the mm. sense that you know, almost all cases, the prices that you see on their websites are well below the real transaction price. And this is essentially a marketing strategy to attract uh, tenants you know, to look for these apartments uh, offline. Right? And uh, the third challenge is actually uh, efficiency in the sense that because it's open information platform, so potentially anyone can post relevant housing information on their websites. So you will be seeing you know, repetitive information. And sometimes even after uh, the apartment gets rent out, but the information on their website doesn't get updated in a timely right. manner. Right? So it could be uh, really hard for the tenants to look for the right place to live. And lastly, um, it's another challenge is actually uh, limited service in the sense that once your know, tenant find something he or she is interested in, then the rest of the rental process is actually completed offline, independent of these housing websites. Right? So I think these uh, potential challenges and problems need a solution and therefore create new business opportunities for private rental companies like Zero. Let's talk more about Zero's business model, Professor, because it uses an online to offline model to enhance customer experience. Talk to us about how the O2O model makes for a better customer experience. A lot of its peers use this as well, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, O2O, or online to offline, is a buzzword that has been talked a lot about, especially in the last couple of years. It's essentially a new business model for the service industry. Uh, it basically allows consumers to shop and pay for the service online, but get to actually enjoy the service offline. Mm. Right? It has a number of advantages. And let's take a look at Ziru's business model and see how this company is able to incorporate the online to offline model into their business. Right. So um, the whole idea here, here is everything that you need to do before moving into a new apartment can be done online through Zero's website. Right. So the process starts with registering your personal information uh, with Zero's online website. And once you're done with that, the next step is you can actually start uh, online searching for the kind of apartment you're interested in. And once you find something you're interested in, you can actually make an online reservation right, to either see the apartment offline, or if you just like the apartment so much, you can actually book the apartment right away and becomes yours immediately. Right? And the next step would be to enter into a contract with Zuru. And this step, in fact, and can also be done online through their website. Of course, you also have the option to uh, do it offline. So Zuru also tries to incorporate this OTO idea into the provision of services after the tenants move in. So for example, can, tenants can actually submit a uh, request for services online for dry cleaning, etc. And the service uh, will be actually delivered by Zuru offline in a mm. timely manner. Okay. Well, it sounds like a great service for bachelors or bachelorettes, which seems to be like their target group anyway, right? That's right. All right, so we're going to leave that discussion there for now. And just a reminder, folks, you can always follow us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. 
For our current and past episodes, simply search for CCTV News. Well, Zero Room is trying to carve out its own niche in a fiercely competitive market. The service it offers, though, can be replicated or overlaps with many of its peers. And that's why the company is striving for increasingly value-added components to its services that its competitors may have overlooked. Will it work? We'll talk about that next.